Jennifer Merstorf, I'm the CEO of the Young Survival Coalition, and here at San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, which is an incredible three days of doctors, researchers, advocates, uh, breast cancer survivors, uh, together to learn about the science of breast cancer. And I'm excited to introduce to Dr. Corday from the University of Washington, and um, she just came out of an amazing session talking about a new study, some results, and uh, she's going to tell us about the results. So what did you learn, and how does it affect young women? So the study that I wanted to talk about today uh, that was presented was the SOFT trial. The SOFT trial was a study that looked at young women, premenopausal women, um, and patients were basically randomized to receive either tamoxifen, tamoxifen in combination with ovarian function suppression, which would be either a medication uh, that's given usually monthly or every three months to keep the ovaries from producing estrogen, um, or ovarian function suppression in combination with an aromatase inhibitor called exogestate. Um, in the study, they did a couple different um, interesting things in terms of the analysis that I just wanted to highlight. First of all, there was basically two, uh, basically two arms of women on this study. One was women who did not receive chemotherapy at all for their treatment, and those women were randomized soon after, uh, after their surgery to either one of the three study arms that I mentioned. The second sort of group of women on this study was women who had received chemotherapy for treatment of their breast cancer. And basically in these women, eight months after they had completed their chemotherapy, their ovarian function was tested, so they still had to be premenopausal. And women who were still premenopausal were then randomized to receive, again, either tamoxifen, tamoxifen plus ovarian suppression, or ovarian suppression with an aromatase inhibitor. Um, and then the data analyses kind of looked at, at all those different groups. So overall, what the study found was that tamoxifen with ovarian suppression was slightly superior to tamoxifen alone. And then as a secondary endpoint, they looked at the combination of ovarian suppression with the aromatase inhibitor, exomestate, in comparison to tamoxifen, and also saw that it was slightly better. When they did the subgroup analysis, I think there's a couple of really important things I want to highlight. One is that in the women who did not receive chemotherapy, so those were primarily women who were um, obviously premenopausal but who had smaller and lower grade tumors, women who either chose or with their physicians chose not to receive chemotherapy or chemotherapy wasn't recommended for them, on all arms of the study, survival was phenomenal. So I believe it was about 95% of those women are still alive and well today. And so I think that that highlights one important thing, which is that in this subgroup of cancers that we consider kind of good risk cancers, any type of hormone therapy works very, very well. In the group of women that did receive chemotherapy who were a slightly younger group, so mostly less than 40, or the median age was 40 actually, um, and obviously had some higher grade tumors and known positive tumors, a little bit more likely. Um, in those patients, uh, specifically the um, combination of aromatase inhibitor with ovarian function suppression or tamoxifen with ovarian function suppression did do slightly better than tamoxifen alone. Um, it's also important to note that when they did subgroup analyses looking at women less than 35 and women greater than 35, it looked like the women that had the greatest benefit were those that were less than 35 years of age. And that may be because there is some effect of dwindling menstrual function in the older women in that, in that, in that study population. But it is something that I think is important to highlight from their data. Um, what I think the bottom line is in terms of how we're going to, you know, what do we tell our patients? Yeah. Should our patients be running to their doctor on Monday morning and saying, switch my therapy? I think that's going to be the big question. Exactly. So one take home is that there's a subgroup of women that does extremely well on any type of hormonal therapy. The second is, in the women that did receive chemotherapy and were still premenopausal, there were about an eight-month period of time where a lot of those women would have received tamoxifen before randomization. And so even women who started on tamoxifen, there is an option potentially for switching to an aromatase inhibitor and ovarian function suppression, but it really needs to be done on a case-by-case -case basis. Talk so, to your doctor. Exactly. <laughs> Talk to your doctor about your risk factors, your exactly. side effects from medication, your given situation, and come up with a plan together. Absolutely. Great. We really appreciate your time and all the young women out there watching this. This is Dr. Corday from the University of Washington, live from San Antonio. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thanks.